Okay there folks, thanks for choosing to watch this video. Input leads to knowledge, knowledge leads to understanding. Input, of course, a complete rip-off of one of my favourite 80s movies of all time. Johnny Five is alive. Okay folks, now this is the first in a series of videos in which we are going to look at performing certain administrative tasks using Windows Server 2008 and 2012. Now in this video I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of installing a virtual lab and in later videos we will then use this lab to carry out various tasks one would expect to perform in a live business environment. Okay, without further ado, let's get straight to it. Okay, now for virtualization software, I'm using VirtualBox. VirtualBox is free and it's perfect for what we want to do. Now, if we go to their website, virtualbox.org, you can see the various options for downloads. Now, we're using Windows. I've already installed this. I have also installed Windows Server 2008 R2 Evaluation Edition. You can get this from the Microsoft website. I will include the URL beneath this video. Now we're going to be installing two virtual machines onto VirtualBox, one with Windows Server 2008 and for the other I have a Windows 7 Ultimate ISO. You can use Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, you could even use XP, Windows 10. Okay, so we open up VirtualBox and we click New and we give our first virtual machine a name. So I'm going to go for Ser Windows Server 2008 R2. And you can see the version is pre-selected 2008, 64-bit. So this is what we need. Okay, now for the purpose of this machine and for the purpose of what we're using it for, I'm going to install, I'm going to provide it with two gig. Now I'm going to create a virtual hard disk. Now, unless you are planning to use this with any other virtualization software, you should just select VDI. For the hard drive or physical hard disk, I'm going to go for dynamically allocate. And for this machine at the moment, I'm going to give this 100 gig. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is select our virtual machine, click on settings and we want to attach our server 2008 ISO. So we click on storage and if we click on the empty CD drive here and we're going to attach our ISO. Okay, there we go. And click OK and now we're going to run our machine. So I'm just going to make sure that this boots up OK and then I'm going to forward the video and we will pick up when the operating system has been installed. OK, our operating system has been installed and of course I am now prompted to create an administrator password. OK, and now we are able to log in as our administrator. In order for our machines to be able to talk to one another, uh, I'm going to go to settings and network. Now, as standard, you will find that the, the default position is for NAT. I am going to use internal network. We don't need the internet for this network. And I'm also going to give it, as it is a domain controller, and it's not part of an existing forest in any way, shape or form, I'm going to provide this with a static IP address. In fact, I'm going to provide both my server and my client machine with static IP addresses and have them on the same network so that they can talk to each other. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to go for 10.0.2.15. The subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. And for the default gateway, 10.0. Oops, it is it. Try that again. 10.0.2 I'll get there, 0.2 and for DNS server 127.0.0.1 OK, 
Okay, so we have now set a static IP address for our server. So we shall have no problems installing Active Directory and DNS now. So we're going to open up Server Manager and we're going to begin adding our roles. So the first role we're going to add is Active Directory Domain Services. So if you can see here, we also require DNS to be installed. Unfortunately, Server 2008 does not allow you to install both together. However, when we are promoting our server to domain controller status, we will be given the option to install DNS at that point. So I'm just going to speed this up again and install Active Directory Domain Services and we'll be right back with you. Active Directory Domain Services has been installed successfully. Now what we need to do is we need to promote our server to domain controller status. So you can see that we are prompted here, run the Active Directory Domain Services installation wizard. Another way you can do this is by actually running the command dcpromo.exe. Okay, and this begins the installation. Okay, click next. Now we're going to create a domain in a new forest. We're not adding this to an existing domain. Now for the fully qualified domain name, we can call this anything of course in a test environment. We're given an example of corp.contoso.com. I normally go for something along the lines of corp.test.com. Okay, so click next. This may take a minute. We're going to leave the default Windows Server 2003 for the domain functional level. Now checking DNS configuration. Okay, so we're going to install, of course, our DNS server. Okay, now we are now prompted to restart our machine and we're going to do that. I'm going to speed this up. Okay, now that our machine has restarted, we have successfully installed Active Directory Domain Services. We have promoted our machine to domain controller status and we have also installed DNS. So the next thing we're going to do is open up Active Directory Users and Computers and I'm going to create some sort of structure you know, something that you would possibly see in a business environment. So within our domain, I'm going to create some OUs. Now, an OU works the same way as any sort of common folder does. The difference with an OU is we can attach group policy objects to an OU. This is relevant to us because in later tutorials, we're going to be performing folder redirection, which uses group policy. So I'm going to create three OUs. I'm going to create one OU called Sales Team and within this OU I'm going to create a further two OUs. One I'm going to call Users. And the next I'm going to call computers. Okay, and within our new users OU, I'm going to create a new user. Okay, I'm just going to create my new user now. test. Okay, maybe not. Let's try something else. Detect. 
it hits a little bit better. Okay, and I'm going to choose my password. Okay, now that I have created my user, we're going to create our second virtual machine. Okay, Windows 7 64 bit. Okay, same process as previously. I'm going to give this, this machine one gig. That's all we need for this machine. Uh, create a virtual hard disk. Again, I'm going to stick with a VDI. I'm going to stick with dynamically allocated. I'm going to give this machine also 100 gig. Probably a bit excessive, but it will work smoothly. It will run smoothly. Okay, so I'm just going to start this machine. Okay, so we need to attach our ISO. Again, click on the empty CD icon and attach your ISO. Okay, so I'm just going to again make sure this boots up okay, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to speed this up, and I'll be back when the operating system has installed. Okay, so our operating system has been installed. First thing I'm going to do is turn off Windows Firewall. Now this is not an, an internet-facing environment, and Windows Firewall can cause problems when you when you're trying to connect. The machines so in this environment I'm okay to just turn this off as mentioned earlier both my machines are on an internal network I give my server a static IP and for the purposes of this lab I'm going to give my client machine a static IP as well so start and view network connections Right click and properties and you will be prompted for your administrator password, your server administrator password. I'm logged in as the user at the moment. Of course if you're logged in as the administrator then you won't be prompted for a password. Okay, so if we flip back to our server machine we'll see our IP address here, 10.0.2.15. So if we go back to our client machine, I'm going to put this on the same network. Our server, of course, is our DNS server. So we're going to use the IP address that. Okay, okay. We have now given our client machine a static IP address. Okay, so now we are going to join our client machine to our domain. So if we go to Start and Computer Properties, Computer Name, Domain Name and Settings, Change Settings, and if we click our domain, if you can remember, it was named corp.test.com. should then be prompted for administrator details. And there we go. So welcome to the corp.test.com domain. We have successfully added our Windows 7 machine to our domain. We will call this our client machine now. 
Okay, so now we're going to log in with our new user, just to confirm that everything is working as it should. So, DTEC and my password, and there you go, the user's password must be changed. And of course, we'll be prompted to set a new password. Again, in a lab environment, you can turn this off for ease, so that you're not prompted. Here we have successfully logged in as our new user. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Now in our next video, we're going to use our lab to create a shared folder. And we're going to connect this shared folder to our user in the form of a mapped drive.